Welcome back to the Strikecast. <laughs> yep. Uh, season season two, episode forty. Episode forty. Oh, oh, no. No. <laughs> we made it. Everybody. Episode forty of season two, unbelievable. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, we should note that our buddy Pete is out on assignment this week, so shout out to Pete. We miss you. We'll see you next week, right, guys? We miss you, Mr. Peter Brown. <laughs> I miss you, Pete. <laughs> um, let's introduce ourselves. Noel, would you like to go first? No PT over here. Noel PT in the house. Jeff, want to yeah. go next? I'm a cool Jeff. I am Jeff. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it's it, it's. It's going uh, fine. It's going great. Um, I, I'm. Yeah. Um, nice. I'm actually, I'm tired. Uh, I'm tired of basically peanut butter trying to actually perk up a little, little bit. Uh, I'm still trying to be full awake, but I'm not. Nah, but. What time did you wake up this morning? Uh, I woke up around maybe eight. Had breakfast at nine. Nice. Seems pretty good to me, right? Uh, yeah. Nice. All right, Susie, you want to go next? Of course. Who are you? Susie Cloutier. Susie I'm Cloutier. a producer. Producer in the house, right? Yep. <laughs> I was going to the moon. And awesome. part of that my partner, I think, being a producer, my girl Wit. Wit, what's here, everybody? Wendy. And we have Ryan, our sound and video yep. engineer. Want to yep. say hi, Ryan? I am Ryan, the sound video engineer. Awesome. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for being with us. Hey, Mr. Ethan, <laughs> you're Ryan. I think my bro. Bro. All right. And I'm Olivia. And now we're all here. Yeah. Noel is sign language for us. Thank you, Noel. Um, even though that's yeah. probably not with that. Um, should we talk about who this is today? Oh, yes. We have what do you guys think? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So our guest today is our friend Tyler Callahar from USM. Um, and he works over there to help students find volunteer placements and service learning um, organizations in the community that um, is a huge help. We partner with USM a lot and Tyler and I work together to find volunteers from USM to come volunteer at Strive. Um, and then a lot of those people end up staying on beyond their like required hours and they are volunteers uh, with Strive for Life. So really excited to talk about his job and all that USM does to help out the community. Noel's got questions ready on his phone. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We ready to start the show? Oh, yes. Yeah. Right, sir. So then we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back and interview Tyler. So, Jeff, we'll be. We'll be right back. Welcome Please welcome back. Tyler to the show. Yay. Welcome, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining and no i think problem. yeah <laughs> it's been a real series getting here um <laughs> no first question so go ahead noel tell, tell us about your job at usm what do you do so the big part of my job is actually helping our faculty and professors build service learning courses which for for example like we do about i don't know in the last 16 weeks i've probably done about 15 different projects um but one of the things that we've been working on like in the last week or two is we we're actually working with elderly care facilities 
Um, because of COVID-19, a lot of the, the people that live there have been trapped in their rooms, haven't been able to see a whole lot of people other than the staff that are living there with them. So they, they've been feeling kind of lonely. So we've been, what we've been doing is, is that we have graduate students that are in counseling courses that just call in and do discussions with them. Um, and those discussions can be, I, I know some students were reading poetry to, to the elderly people that live there. Um, some were talking about gardening, some were talking about baseball. They would develop relationships and talk about other things with each other. Very loose, um, fun things that, that students can do. It also allows people to really take the things that they're learning in their classes and practice them too. So that, that's a really, um, like it can be more intense. We've had more intense projects than that. Um, but that that's gives an example of the types of projects I organize. I also run a scholarship, to pro a scholarship for students called this Chris Alice Scholarship, um, which is about six students a year that are really interested in engaging in the community in a variety of different issues. So they'll pick like, I want to work in environmental work, or I want to work in social justice work, or I want to work... Um, I, I think one of the common ones was poverty and homelessness. And I want to help on that issue and learn about that issue. So they'll find a community partner and I'll do educational sessions with them about the best ways to engage with the community. Yeah, that's so awesome. I'm really warmed my heart about the nursing home. Session. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's one of the fun projects that people like. Yeah, doing, so. my day is better already. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is awesome. Um, and I think Jeff has your next question. You ready, Jeff? Uh, yes, is it my second question or my first question? Your first question. Okay, cool. Um, how did you come to work at USM? So my, uh, the long answer is, is this is what my career wanted, what I wanted for my career since I was an undergrad. It, it's a very niche field, so I won't go into a whole that because that's my whole life story. Nobody, it's important, but not, not for a 45 minute <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I will say I interviewed for this job at, at USM from a national search in 2019, started in January, got hired in in June. And I, I was working in New York City, the suburbs and the city before this, and working with community engagement with college students too. And that job was focused primarily on uh, curricular service, which is just like your standard volunteer projects. Like the students or the people that come to Strive, those students yeah. are usually doing co-curricular service. So uh, what I was doing is actually, I was doing that, but I was also teaching students how to be activists, advocates, um, providing all these different resources about how to get engaged in their community. I, I interviewed for this job because I was interested in getting more experience with um, connecting those things to service learning classes. And um, when I was interviewing, what I really liked about the people that I was interviewing with, I was interviewing with people from the community. Um, and a as I was doing research about Portland, I was learning about all the artists and activists and organizers and all the people that really care about this community and want to see it grow and get, get better and be more progressive and awesome. And I was like, I, I want to be part of that. That sounds really awesome. Like, I, I love New York City. I love the suburbs. But like, it, it, like it, it, there's a lot of stuff going on and I, I can't get my head around everything. Portland right. I can, I can be in a lot of different stuff all at the same time, which is really cool. Um, and honestly, as I was talking to the person that would have been my supervisor, I, I realized like I, I'm pretty radical within my field. Like I, I'm very progressive and like how I approach things is a little bit different than most people. Um, I meshed really well with my supervisor. So I was like, I, if I get an offer, I'm taking it. And I did. And now I'm here. So Nice. Well, we are glad that you are here and we're glad to be able to work with you. And you're definitely right. Portland's a pretty special place, right, you guys? Oh, yes. A, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, there's a part of USM. Um, remember the place I graduated in? That's going to be a homeless shelter. I, yeah, I think it's operating as a shelter right now, right? Which building was it? The one by the... Um, big stage there at USM. Yeah. Jeff and Noel were in the first graduating class of Strive U, Tyler, which is our college program. Um, and we used to partner with USM as our educational partner. So they graduated um, at USM in 2006. Right, guys? Yeah, 2006. I graduated from Strive U in 2013. And they yeah. were still partnered with USM back then, too. Yeah. Like, we were matriculated USM students for some classes there. Yeah, nice. That's a really awesome. Uh, but awesome. that's true, right, Tyler, that there's um, a shelter at USM right now? Yeah, yeah, and uh, the Sullivan Gym. I, and it's, it seems like a really cool project. That is something that they could model out as Preble Street is running it. If I, if right. I'm, I don't know all the details. I wasn't a part of the planning. Yeah, yeah. 
um, but Preble Street is running it. And what I read in the paper was that not only has it been converted to a shelter, but it's been a really successful model of how to build shelters. Um, right. So people have private room, private rooms where they have more space than they would in a traditional area. Um, they're able to like actually come in and out as they want. They do the checking and screening for COVID too, but the social workers there have more time to work with people, which has been really helpful for people that have been right. going into that shelter. Um, yeah. And I, I won't say too much more about it because it's not my project, but yeah. I thought it was really cool. So yeah, that's awesome. All right, now back over to you. Second question. Okay, let's do this. What is your favorite part of your job? I have, uh, I have two favorite parts of my job. The, the first is working with college students. So uh, what I am really lucky to see is that I will see a student come in their first year. And if I'm, if I'm really lucky, I will see them when they graduate too. And I'll see the growth in between. Um, or I'll be a part of that growth, which is an honor. Like you don't always get to do that with every student, but the, the couple that you do get to meet and help and develop with is really an awesome experience. Um, especially in this work, because you get to see a, a new a new person that wants to get engaged in their community when they first come in, the skills that they have, which honestly, as we've been developing over the last decade, like every student class that comes in is better at it when they first come in than when they started, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Um, but everybody grows even more when they come to college and they get to practice the skills of, of being a citizen and um, not even just a citizen, but just somebody that wants to be engaged in their community. Citizen isn't the right word because not every college student is a citizen, but every student that comes in learns and grows, at least when they're with me, which is awesome. So yeah. um, the second part is that I get to work with all these awesome faculty and staff that are really smart and brilliant um, and want to do all these cool different things and have unlimited enthusiasm. And I feel like I have to keep up all the time, which is really cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's awesome. Pretty cool sounding job, right, guys? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, Jeff, back to you. Uh, what? Time for your second question. Okay. Uh, what is the hardest part of your job? Um. So I actually was thinking about this for a little bit and I, I, I struggle with this. I don't struggle with this question. I know exactly what it is. Um, it's just hard to talk about. We we are really deliberate in trying to make sure that we intersect with race, disability, ageism, gender, sexuality, justice, and all the other things that are really important um, to us, right? And, and dismantling those things and working on those things. And we wanna make sure that's front and foremost with all of our projects. Even if it is just calling in and talking to people in the elderly care facility, we wanna be aware that there might be in the elderly care facility because of issues of ageism or, or sexism, right? Like yeah. gender disparity, things like that. Care facilities. Um, we fall short sometimes. Like we have ideals, we work with our partners, we really want to hold each other accountable. Sometimes we don't reach those things and that can be really tough. But yeah. I also know that the relationships that we build with our partners, we're not going to back away if, if we fail. We will just revamp and try and make sure that those projects work. Or we'll say, maybe this isn't the best partnership right now, and we'll come revisit it as things change. Um, it can be really hard to have those conversations. It, it's tough to know that you, you failed in those issues, but it's also really important to keep working in them, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's tricky, but you guys always, at least from our perspective, do an amazing job. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you. Yeah. My third question. Correct. Why is volunteering in the community important? So this is this is a really good question. And I, I, I like this question because it, it gives me a framework to talk about the things that I, not only am I passionate about because I, I work in the volunteer office, um, but because this is an issue I think connects largely to the conversation everybody's having about how society is running and how it's working, right? Um, so I'm, I'm gonna focus on one thing uh, for this. And then if you have follow-up, you can definitely ask if it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So it's really important that people don't work individually. Right, like in your community, you don't want to be the one that's just fixing problems alone or trying to fix problems alone. That that's a bad thing. Um, I mean, it's not bad that you want to help and fix things, but it's really important that you don't do that by yourself um, because you don't know everything. Right, we don't know everything that's going on in the community. You don't have the point of view perspective of what is happening with everybody in your community. So, like, we're all dependent on each other. I think volunteer work is really important to introducing that concept and getting you plugged in with people that are thinking with the holistic picture, like what are the big picture issues in all of Portland or all the United States or all of Maine. Um, 
so like I, I was actually thinking we actually have some examples that have been popping up lately. I, mutual aid groups have been a really cool example of what people have been doing that isn't considered traditional volunteer work. You're not going in a soup kitchen and serving a meal. What people are doing and what, what these groups have been doing and they're modeled off what black communities have been doing for, for decades, if not a century or two. Um, they are like pooling all of their money together and then they're like, this person can't pay their electric bill. We're going to pay it for them. Right. As the right. Right. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Or somebody, somebody doesn't have three meals today. We're going to make sure that person has three meals for the next week and then we'll come back. Maybe they'll have some type of paycheck at the end of it. And then that person will pull in and everybody gets help that way. Right. Um, which I think is a really cool way to reframe volunteer work. Um, and I, and as we actually, as we're talking about this issue, like um, when we're talking about housing right now, we're going to see a lot of evictions. What I think is a really cool type of volunteer work. Um, and this isn't, this would be the more radical piece of what I talk about. People are going to try to block evictions. They're going to change locks on doors. They're going to they're going to frame people from walking into houses together. They'll circle people so they can't get arrested if they don't pay their rent. And I think that that's the type of community involvement that we're talking about, which is more intense. Like everybody everybody works in different ways and has different onboarding ramps. Um, but these types of things, I think, are really cool ways to reframe volunteer work that are that are going to help and actually change the system in positive ways. Um, and, and to just kind of give you an example here, I was actually thinking about this and organizers and stuff like that. Um, we, we know that like people work at, when they do volunteer work, right? So if you're in a soup kitchen, you're doing a volunteer job and you're, you're developing skills, you might be coming back consistently doing all those things and you're doing it because you enjoy doing that work, right? What if we lived in a society where people only work 20 hours a week and they get paid $60,000 to do that work? Right. They have plenty of time where they have free time. They can go do other things, but that's the, the work that they want. That's the work they're choosing to do in their free time, right? Um, what if 10 people just get paid to do that all the time and nobody right. needed to volunteer, right? That's a yeah. pretty good idea, to, at least to me. Yeah. Um, and even like if we're talking about tutoring, if somebody wants to tutor in their free time, they have a, like they went to math. They, or they majored in math. They went to math. Okay. <laughs> they majored <laughs> in math and they really wanted like tutoring in math somebody wanted to work 25 hours a week just tutoring in math for five students, why not pay them to do that? Give right. them health to do that, do those things. Then we don't even need volunteers anymore, which I, I right. think um, what we should be moving towards as a society. So yeah. yeah. It's an interesting way to look at it, right guys, of re kind of reframing the way we see volunteer work. Nolan, Susie, when we're at Strive, you guys have volunteer jobs, right? Yes, we do. Where do you yeah. guys volunteer? Where do you volunteer? Yeah. Uh, horse farms. Right, in a horse farm, right? And do you go to Partners for World Health, Sue's, too? Yes, I do. Nice. Noel, do you, where do you volunteer with the program? I only volunteer at Stripe Night. Oh, right, you volunteer at Stripe Night, yes. So Noel helps me out on Friday nights for our socials and he runs our snack bar. That's pretty cool. Really awesome work. Yeah. Really cool thing. Um, I think, Jeff, you're up with the next question. Uh, yeah, I'm on my third question. Yep. Uh, what uh, does the future of uh, of a student uh, volunteering look like? Yeah. So this is a really good question too. So this is I, I've been on my hobby horse about this particular question for a long time. So I'm trying to push people into the future, right? Um, I need to advocate and make sure that people know what the future of volunteering could look like. So what I what I think is really important for volunteer work, we can't just throw it out the window, right? Like we know what the system looks like now. We know what things are required. We have we have to have people that are working with Strive U, right? Or helping to do the socials at Strive U. We have to have people working. Mm -hmm. An equestrian. Um, I, it was an equestrian. I can't remember the full it's name. It's a horse farm, right, Susie? Horse farm. Yeah. Yes, the horse farm. Yeah, we have to have people that volunteer and work at that horse farm because there isn't enough funding otherwise. Like that, that organization won't exist. And I, I think there's value in those organizations to exist. And there's definitely value for Strive to exist, right? Like we know this. Um, so like what we need to be thinking about is how do we educate people when they go into volunteering and use it as a runway 
on like, how do we really fix these issues so that we don't need volunteers, that everybody can be compensated and do, do this labor in a way that is fair and equitable, um, which I think is really what, what I try to do with all of our projects, right? So even the service learning projects are naturally geared to this, but even just the one-time projects, we try to give a very brief issue overview. So if we're talking about environmentalism, we wanna make sure we wanna talk a little bit about racial environmentalism, right? Like black right. people are disproportionately um, impacted by pollution and policies with environmental issues, right? Um, the other part of that is like, we need to provide next steps to people when they volunteer. How do you, how do you advocate for those things? Where do you advocate for those things? Civic education hasn't been particularly great for a lot of people. And we need to like, the, the way to get people involved is to teach them like, this is how you would interact within the system. And this is how you interact outside of the system to make change and right. giving those steps and giving the people that are running those projects the opportunity to do those things. So if Olivia wanted to talk about this with the volunteers and just say, hey, there's this, this, and this bill. Um, I know you can't do that because you have, you have a nonprofit status, right? But like one of the key components is we need to tie all that together somehow um, or people need to find some way to do that research or educational opportunities that are provided to strive volunteers that are outside of whatever system we have right now, right? Um, again, all, all pretty revolutionary stuff, I think, and it's um, challenging to the status quo, but I think it's important to, to talk about. And um, I think that's the future of volunteering is using it as an on-ramp to get to more advocacy and systematic change. Yeah, that's huge. That's awesome, you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Noel, I think you have one more, right? Yes, I do, Olivia. Okay. What is your one thing you wish everyone know about your job or about volunteering? Yeah. So I have uh, I have three things. One is that volunteer work without the advocacy and education components is just maintaining the status quo. It's not the end of the world, but it's really important we recognize that and try to transition to better systems. Um, two is I, I always want to make sure that people know the service learning side of things is different than the volunteer side of things, but service learning is based, um, the roots of it come from HBCUs. They've always been using um, service learning pedagogy. So they would encourage people if they had children and they were in an education course to use their experiences with kids to write their papers, to do group activities, things like that. So the black community has really been the roots of what community engagement looks like. Um, and not a lot of people that gets whitewashed out of community engagement and service learning history. The other, the other part is there was a, a pretty revolutionary educator called Paolo Freire that wrote Pedagogy of the Oppressed that was talking about in the 70s, um, breaking down barriers between teachers, students, and the community for, for a long time. And he was a long time writer and working on that issue. So these issues are not, these, the, the history of service learning is different than what people traditionally think. Um, and I don't need to go more than that. I just want to give props to the people that actually put in the work and the history that is actually there. Um, yeah. and the third is, is that um, women, black and brown faculty tend to always gravitate towards service learning. Like those are the people that are they're doing the most amount of work. And I just want to recognize that they're doing that work and our systems don't really reward those things. Mm -hmm. So faculty that are going for tenure are not getting extra treatment or extra special items because they're doing service learning pedagogy, despite it being extra work. Right. It's yeah. not, it's not a part of their tenure packages. It's not a part of, um, they don't get, they may get an award from it, but it usually is not from the university. Right. Like those things, I just want to give props to all of my, my colleagues that do that work, um, despite not getting recognition for it, so. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. that's huge. All right, well, Noel's camera seemed to disappear, but we'll have him back in a second. And so those were all of our quote unquote regular questions we had, there he is. All right, you guys, so what's it time for now? It's time for the? In Lightning round. And, and Jeff, you usually go first in the lightning round, right? Uh, yes. Yes. So yeah. what would you like your first lightning round? Also, questions? these are unscripted. So yes. who knows what you're going to get, Tyler? Okay. <laughs> <Prepared>. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, uh, what's, your, uh, what's your favorite restaurant? Favorite yeah. restaurant? Um, yeah. I, I really like Rebel Cheesesteak in Portland. It's a, it's a food cart, I think, technically. Yeah. That, that's, it's awesome. I'm, yeah. 
That's a really good one. All right, Noel, back to you. What's your favorite video game? Mm. I really love The Legend of Zelda, but I'm a big gamer. I have I have multiple tiers, so. Yeah. <laughs> Several. All right, Jeff. Um, what's your favorite baseball team? Detroit Tigers. Nice. I'm originally from Michigan. Oh. Um, no. If you were in a if you were in a picnic, what type of picnic barbecue food you like to have? Uh, <laughs> barbecue picnic. Br- brisket sandwiches and burnt ends. Mm-hmm. Great answer. This always makes me hungry. Um, <laughs> Jeff, back to you. Okay. Uh, um, what's your favorite uh, drink at a at a barbecue? Favorite drink at a barbecue. Um, I I like a little bit of bourbon. Mm, good one, right, guys? I don't know that they're bourbon guys, but <laughs> Noel, yeah. <laughs> Noel, you want to do one more? Oh yeah, go for it. Um. If you were a a superhero, what what do your superpowers might be? Mm. Uh, do we have any kissing? So I'm a I'm a big comic book nerd, so this is this is hard. Um, I I think I would want like magic powers. Like I, I always like the like the Constantine and Zatanna powers. I always thought those were cool. Um, that kind of feeds into my love of all things magic and sci-fi, but you know. I, that's what I. That's what I would say. Like uh, whatever, it's casting spells, raising, yeah. doing all that cool stuff. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. All right, you guys. Well, those are all of our questions, right? Oh, I know. Um, Jeff and Ina tell the joke. Ask him to tell a joke. Oh, sure, Jeff. You want to ask him his favorite joke? Uh, yes. Um. Uh. What is your watch? Uh, tell us about your best uh, uh, joke, uh, Tyler. You know, honestly, I haven't thought about telling a joke since I was in elementary school. I realized <laughs> I realized I wasn't funny very early on, so I, I, I that <laughs> that, that's okay. Jeff, you want to tell a joke instead? Uh, yes. Um, Go for it. Um, knock, knock. Who's there? Um. <laughs> what was it? Uh, us. Us. Us who? You know, we are. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Amazing. Nice track. Uh, I'm 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 <laughs> well, Tyler, thank you so much for coming on this drive, guys. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you thinking me. Of course. Awesome. Well, we'll see you later. I want to say bye, guys. Bye. bye nice uh, to meet you. Tyler, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. You're awesome. <laughs> you're awesome. You as well, Tyler. Have soon. a good one, everybody. Thanks. Um, all right, Jeff, want to say we'll be right back? We'll be right back. Broadcast is brought to you by listeners like you. Listeners like who? Susie, who's our listener of the week this week? Peter Brown, his favorite. And the whole Brown family. So shout out to Pete and Anne Marie and Zach and Elizabeth um, for being the one of our best <laughs> listeners. Uh, <laughs> listeners. And the grandparents, too. And, the gra- and, and Pete's parents as well. So thanks to the whole Brown family for listening to our show. We really, really, really appreciate it. Yeah. Right? My, my kind of off of my chest right now. Getting that off of her chest. All right, Jeff. Yeah. We'll, be, we'll be. We'll be right back. We're back and it's time for Ask Noel. 
If you have a door, oi boy, you say, <laughs> maybe let a boy. Welcome back to the Coconut Yak. <laughs> Interesting yeah. intro today. Thanks yeah. for that. Um, so today, Noel, we have an email from Charles in Brunswick. Ah. And Charles wrote to us to tell us that he was at the 20th anniversary gala earlier in January. And he heard the speeches that you and Jeff um, wrote to Pete. And I was wondering if you could, it says you, it seems like you've known each other for a really long time. And if you could tell everybody about what Pete means to you and all of the things that Pete has taught you from Charles and Brunswick. Yeah. You want to start yeah. I like Charles and Brunswick. <laughs> yeah, what but he's asking about Pete. Oh. That's how you know Pete and what, how, what Pete has helped you do in life. Oh. How, how, how many do you get in this drive you? Yeah, you were in the first class of Strive U, right? And Pete start, sort of started that program. Yeah, he was the landlord. <laughs> he was. <laughs> and the program director, right? Yeah. Yeah. But before he had his new position, right. he was the landlord. <laughs> he was the landlord. So that's the only way you know Pete, he was your landlord? And before Strive U. For and you knew Pete before Strive U, right? Yeah, and the Kiwanis group, too. And the Kiwanis group, right. And then we used to go to the Mellows. Nice. What yeah. are some of your memories with Pete? Uh, uh, I know. Memory. Yeah. Go for it. Taking his shoes. Appropriate memories. Yeah, taking his shoes. To the pool in California. Oh, didn't you put like shaving cream in them or something? <laughs> oh, my. That was <laughs> Right, that was the yeah, yeah, different, <laughs> different California memory. What did you do with it? You just wore his shoes to the pool. Yeah. What's another fun Pete memory you have? Um, uh, let's see. Did we go in many beaches together? I don't. Know. What about uh, at drive? Oh, the baseball, the bat, the mean basketball game at Strive. Yeah. Oh. And at and at camp, too. Yeah, you guys did Strive you Experience Weekend, right? Yeah. Pretty cool. Jeff, do you have any favorite Pete memories you want to share? Um, we know how much you love Pete. Um, uh, yes. Um, I I'm glad Charles wrote this question. I love getting to have you guys talk about Pete and embarrass him any chance we get, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, um, I do re... Remember that one time I got hit with a basketball. <laughs> but that's not a Pete memory. That's just a you memory. <laughs> uh, oh, so yeah. Why, yeah. why is that your favorite memory? Favorite uh, I, I think it's kind of not, but I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, all the fun things that I did with Pete. Yeah. And, and What's something uh, Pete taught you how to do? Uh, I think Pete had told um, me, always be happy. Always be nice to your friends, mm -hmm. and yeah. And don't ignore the bride and the groom at a wedding. Right, yes. <laughs> My favorite Pete memory was when we were at, at um, Strive Walks. Mm -hmm. He did the clown action parade. I think he was a clown. Oh my yes, God. I don't remember that, but that sounds funny. I uh, said oh, yeah. clown face, and he said, "Hey, um, your clown friend, how are you doing?" Gary, <laughs> remember that. I, oh, I do. I do um, remember when he was I saying, actually remember when but, Pete was Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah. Pete dressed up. Yeah, I heard that was really Santa, though. I that one, too. And Peter, Go ahead, me, and Peter told me not to say any to anyone. He was just being a real Santa Claus and say, 
I'm really Santa Claus. I'm not Pete Brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I heard that was really Santa, though. So I, I mean, I, I could tell. Uh, I know exactly that Pete was in a closet because I, I, I can see his blue eyes. Oh, his blue eyes. <laughs> That's something only you would say, Jeff. Right. We can stop embarrassing Pete for now, but, but I'm really glad yeah. Charles wrote that question because it's always good to give Pete credit because he usually doesn't want to take any. So happy vacation, Pete, and good. thanks for asking that question, Charles. And if you want to write to Noel, you can write to him at strivecast at pslstrive.org and ask him any kind of question you want. That's appropriate, obviously. Um, or, you can leave a mustache. or something about a mustache. Or you can leave him a voicemail at 207-774-6278-352 for the Ask Noel hotline. So we haven't had a voicemail since we've been at home. So I think it could be fun to do hey, that. Oh. Thing. Give that number a ring and ask Noel a question. Right? Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Jeff, we'll be. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, and it's time for. Yakking with me. Yakking with <laughs> Jeff. Yakking with you. So, Jeff, what is your question for the group today? Yep. What's your favorite? Uh, summer activity. Uh, yeah, activity. Awesome. Who would you like to ask first? You, Olivia. Oh, thanks. Um, I would say my I have a tie for strawberry picking, which I've been doing a lot lately, maybe a little too much, and swimming in the ocean. It's my fave. So that's mine. Going to the beach. I see any shocks in the ocean? Okay, exact same thing for Whitney. The exact same thing for Whitney. I enjoy going to the beach on a really hot day with a nice book and some music and then getting a hard serve ice cream. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's so yummy. For no Thompson. Um, in, in the summertime. Yeah. I'm like going down to OLB. You're like going to Old Orchard? Yeah, and Splash Town, too, in Fun Town. Yeah. And go to Disney. Eat you go to Disney in the summer? Not this year, but some yeah. summer. Nice. Some jelly beans down there. We had a lot of fun. Have jelly beans down there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Summer activity jelly beans. Jelly beans. <laughs> Jeff? Oh, uh, yep. Who would you like to ask next, next? Susie or Ryan? Uh, Ryan. Okay. Um, like, I like to um, go for the walks here. I like going to the beach. Um, like amusement parks. Um, yeah, I like some. I like to play mini golf too. Nice. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah. I think some have already opened now. I think oh, some good. playing mini golf with uh, safety measures. Well, social distancing is inherent, but it's uh, serious to disinfect golf clubs that are being used from the place and the golf right. balls as well. Nice. Yes. Awesome. All right, Jeff, want to ask Susie? Um, uh, Susie, the exact same question. Okay, me summer. My birthday is coming up, and I like to go to beach and go swimming and walk with Noel on near the at the um beach. Hold hands and no one's surprised about that. <laughs> no one are you surprised? He's being too cool. He loves it. I don't know. Is that I don't it? know how she brought up that. Because you guys are dating, apparently. That's what you're... We are. Oh, okay. Because we are boyfriend and girlfriend, right, baby boy? Yep, yeah, that's a boy. 
All right, let's yeah, yeah. check in with Jeff and see what his favorite summer activity is. Yeah. Yes. What What's your favorite summer activity? Uh, um, summer activity. Um, my favorite activity is um, I do love to go swimming. Yeah. And I, I really love that a, a, a lot more. You like and, swimming in an ocean or in a lake or in a pool? Um, um, probably in a swimming pool and mm -hmm. also the ocean as well. Nice. Well, awesome. Sounds like we're all going to have a great summer, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Great yakking with you question, Jeff. Thank you. B. We'll be right back. Webcast is brought to you by listeners like you. And your ad here. Your ad here. Right uh, here. here. This week is Kim and Jim's ice cream in Kansas City. So if you're in Kansas City, don't miss the best ice cream ice in, cream in, town. in the Kim world. And Jim. Right, guys? Yes. Yes. We yes. love Kim and Jim's ice cream, right? Yes. yes. What's your favorite flavor, Jeff. Uh, what? What's your favorite flavor? Um, my favorite flavor, um, is actually uh. Chocolate and strawberry. Wow, don't miss their famous chocolate and strawberry swirl. I mean, what can you ah. that? So, Kim and Jim's Ice Cream in Kansas City, thanks for sponsoring the show. But just like Jeff said, your ad could go right here in place of Kim and Jim. So we would love to work out a plan to advertise your business on the show. Right, guys? Of course. Yeah. Of course. These guys could be your spokespiece full. I don't know who else you could possibly want to advertise your brand um, because they do the best job as you've heard in our previous ads. So contact us at strivecast at pslstrive.org if you'd like to sponsor our show. We'll work out a plan that works for your business. Oh our yeah. Jeff, we'll be. We'll be right back. Susie's cues. Go ahead, Suze. Susie's <coughs> cues. I love my game show. And plus, my favorite team. Susie's cues. Susie's cues. And what right. today, Suze? Well, today on my my game is true and false about the state but of me, right? Whitney will read the questions and I'll play the game. All right, let's do it. Wait, what's our first cue? All right, our Whitney's first cue. true or false question is: Maine has the coldest spring in the country. Oh my God! True or false? I want to say true. Uh, I was going to say uh, true. I'm going to say false. False. Oh, I'm with Olivia's side on that one. What do you think, Noel? True or false? Whitney? So we've got three falses and two trues. Mm -hmm. Answer is false. Yeah. <laughs> Alaska. <laughs> Rain. I figured Alaska might be a little Maine cold. is second. Is it really? Oh. All right. Number two. If you hit a moose in Maine, its body is donated to area nonprofit. Oh. False. <laughs> False. True. False. True. 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 Okay, true. All right. Did everyone submit their answer? I think so. Uh, yes. When the the is answer false. is... False. Yes, that was right. It. You hit yes. a, you hmm. get to keep it if you want it. I got it right. I don't Ew. think I know. <laughs> I, I said right. false before I said true. Okay. You did say false before. You All said. right, next one. 
Maine is the closest state, so the closest place in the U.S. to Africa. No. 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 That's false. False. True. 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 Me too. Three falses. The answer is true. We have the most eastern most points. I was so close. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Next. So the boot outside of L.L. Bean, the big boot that's on the sidewalk, is a size 204. Um, I say it's 205. You think it's bigger? (laughs) So you say false, Jeff? Yeah. True. 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 Jeff is the only one that got that right. The answer is false. It's a size 410. (laughs) Is that being a real number? <laughs> yes, I got it right. Nice job, Jeff. You're in the lead. I mean, there's no one with a truly big foot like that. You have the proper <laughs> size standard. Right. All right, next one. The donut hole. This whole episode's making me so hungry. I know. I'm, I gotta donut go. Donut hole was invented by a mainer. Like a munchkin? Yep. True or false? True. It's true. True. Uh, true, Whitney. What do you think, Noel? Yeah. All right, we all say true. All right, you're all right, Captain. Yeah. Yeah. From Rockport was tired of the uncooked centers in the donuts, so he poked a hole in the middle so they would cook. <laughs> wow, awesome. I'm learning a lot during this drive cast. I know. Oh, I know you are. Wait. All right, we have a couple more left. All right, let's do it. So the next one. There are no dangerously venomous spiders in Maine. <laughs> so Maine doesn't have any poisonous spiders. False. False. Brown uh, false. I'm going to say false. I think we do. I say false also. Fall, fall down is a. We are uh, all wrong. The answer is. Don't, we really don't really have any. There are no venomous spiders. We don't have any? That's crazy. Nope. It's crazy talk. All right. Number seven. Yeah. The sweet flower of Maine is a pine cone. True, yeah. right? Definitely true. True, Whitney. Uh, true. Flower. So you're all right. The answer is true. Mm. All right, two left. Here we go. Maine is the largest producer of blueberries in the country. True. True. Oh, true. Uh, true, Whitney. True. Uh, You're all right again. You guys are smart. You're so smart. You yes, right, are. One. All right, last one. And I don't have the answer, so I think we're going to have to guess. All right. Yeah, I know the answer. Maine is the only state whose name has one syllable. Maine is the largest state. Mm, uh, it's the only one state one. that has one syllable. Um, uh, true. <laughs> think it's, uh, is that it? Um, true. Uh, uh, it's true. 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 Did we all say true? Yeah. Yep. I think that's the answer. I think it's true, yeah. There aren't any others. Awesome. Well, good job, guys. We learned a lot about the state of Maine today. Educational. So fun. And it's my favorite fact is about the donut hole. <laughs> Me too. No, I'm I love it. Yeah, it's so beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. All right, Susie. Good oh, game. Susie, you want to sing us out? Oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> um. Susie's cute. Susie is the best at this game. In plus, we won. Oh, yeah. Susie's cute. All right. And Jeff will be. We'll be right back. We're back and it's time to wrap. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Me and Jim, let's see. Wrap it up. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the same dance. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much to our guest Tyler for coming on the show. That was a really informative and really awesome interview. So thank you so much to him for joining us. Thanks to so much to our producers, Whitney and Susie. Whitney sliding into the host chair for Pete. Boom. Pete on assignment. Boom. Hope we didn't embarrass you too much. Um, thanks to our sound and video engineer, Ryan, who puts our yeah. show together this week. Really appreciate that. And uh, stay tuned next week. We have a special Strive Rocks episode coming at you because next week, Friday, July 17th. Yep. Oh, my God. I thought I got the date wrong. Is our virtual Strive Rocks event. So don't miss it. It's going to be the biggest virtual party of the whole summer, potentially the whole year. And my mom and my dad. You got like that right, Liv. Right. You're mom, on your daughter, what? I did. I'm going to hook it up to the TV. In nice. The <laughs> Upstairs. Be on the big screen. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. And thanks for listening. Bye. 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 I miss you all. Bye. I miss you all.